All right, so you're gonna hear this theme a lot. It's all about getting it right the first time. And the best way to do that is by matching you to the best instructor possible. And it may not be your friend's or your relative's best instructor. It's the instructor that works best for you. And how do we do that? How do we find a good instructor? What makes a good instructor? Well, for starters, you're gonna to wanna to shop around. This is pretty straightforward. It literally means shop around like you would a new car, a new home. The one big difference is the unique individual that teaching you plays a much larger personal role than say your car dealer or a realtor. You're not putting your life directly in any of their hands or spending a long day on a boat or an overnight stay, several, even an exotic vacation with them. So no matter what, you kind of need to vibe well with the instructor or the dive shops team that you choose to get certified with. Call. Visit in person if you can. Of course, check the reviews, stock their social media, see what other people say, and of course, get referrals from friends. All of those things will form a picture and you should use all of those tools. A big telltale sign is to see what they're doing on a regular basis after the scuba certification class ends. You gotta weigh all these different things, but never rely on just one. You'll be spending a lot of time with these people on a very personal level. Make sure you feel good about it. You have to take action. Go talk to a few of them, introduce yourself. This is a two-way street. Any reputable instructor or dive shop should be able to have a discussion with you in person. Or worst case, I know that's not always possible, they should be able to have a discussion with you over the phone. Within a reasonable amount of time, sometimes you know, give them a chance to call you back there with a customer or something like that. A lot of times there's just one person working in a dive shop. I know I've been there, I've been on both sides of that. But take the time to get to know the person or the crew that your future enjoyment and even and possibly your life will depend on. This is the most critical step of all and this shouldn't be glossed over. I'm gonna list some qualities to look for. One, customer service. They call back when they say, they answer the phone professionally in a timely manner, and they're confident in the material explaining the course. But above all, they value you. Another one is experience with a wide range of people. This one gets missed a lot. One thing to teach a bunch of tough guys, military police, fire, but what about people that aren't as physically fit? What about children, elderly, people that are just more nervous? They're not used to doing physical things or they don't have to be there for their job. Depending on your circumstance, this is really something to keep an eye out for. Online reviews and social media will give you a good read on this. Do a little stocking if you can. Here's another one, activities. Do they offer additional classes after you're certified? The big ones should be nitrox, advanced, and rescue classes. Pretty much everybody should be teaching those beyond open water or at least on occasion. Here's another question to ask. Can they take you all the way up to a leadership level like dive master or even an instructor? Do they have a steady schedule of local or international dive trips? Now not everybody's in a place where you're going to see local ones so they may just run international trips. Sometimes it's the opposite. Are they part of any meetup groups or do they host any meetup groups, clubs, events? They don't need to do all of these things but there should be a healthy community surrounding the instructor or the dive shop. It's just so important to have things to do later when the class is finished. That may be one of the most pivotal elements of all after you get scuba certified. So Surrounding activities and returning customers are probably one of the strongest indicators of a healthy dive operation. This is the most important thing. You'll get through the certification class one way or the other, but then what? The last thing you want to do is go through a course, become a certified diver, be full of excitement, and be left standing there asking, what now? A great shopper instructor will have endless options for you, or at the very least, know who to put you in touch with for whatever it is you're looking to do. Assuming they're doing all the basics, this is a big one, especially for me. Are they welcoming and enthusiastic? Do they love their job? Do they love being there? Are they excited to welcome you into this incredible world? This might seem like a given, but it's not. The only acceptable answer should be yes. They should love what they do and it should reflect in your very first interaction. You should never be made to feel like you're not in the cool club because you're a newbie and you don't know anything. It's okay to not know anything. They should be there to lift you up and help you, not tell you how awesome and experienced they are. A good dive shop or instructor should be eager to lift you up and want you to be a part of their community. Here's another one to look for in a dive shop. Do they have a well-stocked, clean, organized store? This doesn't mean they should be floor to ceiling with gear, but they should have a good selection of the things that you'll need, and they should be able to explain the features and benefits of pretty much anything you touch or point to. If they're not living and breathing what they sell, that's a red flag. This is also equally critical. Do they offer servicing down the road for items like regulators and tanks and other equipment? Now, you might be wondering, hey, I got a great independent instructor that's not affiliated with a shop. Totally okay. It's actually how I got started out before I opened a dive shop. 
For independent instructors that do not teach through a shop, ask them if they have a relationship with a reputable local facility, assuming there is one in your area. Independent instructors should have relationships within their community, especially with at least one dive shop or facility. The hobbyist versus the professional. I'll tell you what that means. It's charming to think of an instructor who just loves to do what they do and they just do it on their spare time because they love it so much. Or it's one of those they make a living with their hobby slash dive shop. Uh, they don't take it too seriously. It's a retirement job or doesn't have to make a profit or anything like that. But remember this because I've seen this and I've witnessed this. A hobbyist may not always be as motivated to stay organized and this is a very task loading organizationally heavy activity especially from back of house point of view. Uh, they may not be as well planned up to date and handle the inevitable problems that are going to arise. Someone who relies on the success of their business to make a living is more likely to have the motivation to resolve those kind of issues because it is in fact their livelihood. You'll probably get that vibe almost immediately with the enthusiasm in which they greet you and the amount of effort they're willing to spend to solve your problems and answer your questions. Teaching and guiding requires a lot of patience. Lots of people teach on the side or at will and this isn't always bad. It's a great way to get unbiased instruction and know they have a passion for what they do. It's more of an analysis that you can take of the shop or operation owner or the manager, whoever's in charge, as this sets the tone for the customer service that they cultivate through their staff. The easiest way to distinguish how the business itself operates is the bait shop test. Would this double as a fishing bait shop in the back or does it feel like a place for fun professionals that handle recreational life support equipment? Now, some places are inherently very busy and they're near the water and so there's a lot of wet activity in the gear or tank fill station areas, but the organization and cleanliness should follow at least a baseline standard. The back of shop will usually tell you everything you need to know. That's the dirty little secret. Reviews. Reviews are not a strong source of reliable information, but a piece of the overall puzzle. Reviews mostly just help you identify problem instructors, which thankfully is pretty rare overall. Most people with honest sincerity believe their instructor is the greatest of all time and they'll absolutely rave about it. Don't believe me, just start looking at the reviews and you'll find that their instructors adore them and give them paragraphs of praise. This is due to the nature of the business. When you take someone on life support underwater for the first time and escort them th you know, through that passageway from this world into the next, a special bond forms. The student has to put 100% of their trust in that instructor in that moment. So that's a connection we usually don't make with people on a regular basis. Plus it's something amazing and fun. So there's a lot of bonding and most instructors truly are doing a pretty good job. Usually find 10 to 20 raves for around one complaint. In most cases, the complaint is coming from a student who didn't follow directions. Not always, but a lot. So you'll start to see if you have a trained eye for it. Or sometimes a student is pressured into going or they really bit off more than they could chew or they weren't honest about their abilities and they didn't perform well in the class and nobody wants to be embarrassed in front of people and people tend to lash out when that happens and look for somebody to blame. This isn't always the case, but this scenario is actually pretty well known in the dive industry. Something to look for would be along the lines of an instructor who didn't seem to want to be there or lacked enthusiasm, couldn't answer questions very well, uh, showed up late, didn't seem to be organized, or just wasn't very friendly. Those are things that are probably a little more likely to be true. Read through the reviews, read between the lines, and you'll get a better picture of what people loved or what they didn't. But remember, take them with a grain of salt, and remember reviews are not a strong indicator of a good instructor. Just a small tool in your tool set. All right, referrals and social media, a little bit better than online reviews. Uh, it's slightly more organic and be challenged by other parties. There's people that can comment for or against underneath, or if there's a complaint, you might have people underneath that's like, no, I was in that class, I saw it, you, you forgot to bring your thing and you got mad or whatever. But still a lot of the same things happen here. Everyone on social media will re recommend their instructor and say they're the absolute best for all the same reasons. And in most cases, that's a good starting point and it's probably true. Just remember that most people have only ever had one instructor so it's very hard to tell the good ones from the great ones it's even harder to tell which one is right for you which is the most important thing so remember that you need to actually interact with a few shops or instructors and see how they make you feel it's as simple as just going and saying hi. Uh, whenever possible, go and physically walk into a dive shop or meet an independent instructor first. You do want to be courteous of their time, but you know, maybe if you can't do that, do a phone call or something. There's just no substitute for in-person interaction.
Finding the right instructor is the most important part of becoming a scuba diver. There's not a close second. So hopefully you got some new tools here to use when starting your search. Since we just covered the most important part of deciding where to learn to dive, there's a few more key components to arm yourself with, such as agencies, dive locations, scheduling, and a couple others. So go out there and find an instructor that makes you feel good, and let's jump to the next video.